Okay. Okay, campers. So we are going to get started with some uh, rigid body simulations really quickly. So start, we're just gonna make a sphere. This is Cinema 4D, uh, if you're in the right class. And a plane. We're gonna make this plane uh, 4,000 by 4,000. Um, and Shift C on the keyboard, bring up a cloner tool, drop the sphere right into the cloner tool. Grab the cloner tool, bring it up. You can change the dimensions there or change the dimensions here. I usually prefer to do it here. Um, so you can get a little more precise. And we're gonna add another layer to it. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, so these, this is our clone of balls. And to set up a rigid body dynamic simulation, super simple. You just right click and go to simulation tags, collider body on your plane. And then on your cloner, you can actually just create a rigid body simulation right there on the cloner. And this is quite anticlimactic. So we're gonna go back. The benefit of not baking this is you can uh, kind of manipulate the attributes here. Um, on this cloner, we're gonna shift C and do a random tag. So this random tag, you can see right here, is affecting this cloner tag through the effectors. And you can change the parameters of what it's doing. You can make it random scale. You can make it random uniform scale. It's pretty cool. And then again, this is new with one of the recent updates, but you can just make the rigid body simulation go right there. Pretty neat. Um, so I'm just gonna spice this up a tiny bit. Uh, I'm gonna control click on this to bring up another one to set kind of a background little backdrop for our beautiful simulation. And then bring it back over here. So we're just kind of on a little table. I'm going to bring in my Octane Live Viewer and start lighting this bad boy with an HDRI environment and a targeted area light. Um, so, looks great, doesn't it? Nat. I'm gonna try to rim these bad boys as hard as I can. Uh, when in doubt, you can rim them from the top, you can rim them from the top sides. Uh, just make sure you're getting enough rim on them giving them some rim. I'm gonna give them all three rims. And then I'm gonna give them some key over here. Those are all way too bright. So I'm gonna select them all, go into the light settings, Octane light tag, light settings, power, slurp them down a bit. Um, and then I'm gonna select the rims, maybe bump them up to 15 or so, because they're not hitting them as directly. And bada bing, bada boom. Still doesn't look that good. So I'll do uh, octane light settings, do direct lighting. I'll usually bump this up to 256, or really like five, 512 is a good number, but 
I'm gonna be lazy. And then bump these numbers up a bit too. These just control the uh, the depth of paths. I, I'm not gonna pretend to know what they do. They have specific attributes um, and they make the calculations a little better for their specific attributes that they correspond to. Um, the bingo. And then I'm gonna create, uh, I'm gonna go to window and material manager. That way I can see my materials. I'm gonna create uh, extensions, C4D Octane, Octane material. I'm gonna make this one a glossy material. Um, and I'm going to set the diffuse to black. And I'm going to set the roughness to an image to give it some uh, some greasiness per se. Um, I'm going to hold control to duplicate this control and drag to duplicate that material. Maybe I'll make this one a uh, white or something. And bring this to this guy and this guy. So now if we play through our animation, the balls are bouncing. It's really pretty neat looking. Um, I'm actually gonna add some color to this. So make this orange. No, burnt orange, much better. Add a bit more light. I'm gonna switch to this like, uh, you know, high key ad style. The second you add some color to the scene, you just gotta get it going. Make everything look like a, is that refinancing your student loans application commercial thing? Ciao. Um, and then if you hit Control D, you can bring up your uh, project settings, and then you go to Dynamics, Cache, and you can bake this dynamic. So if you scroll through the timeline, it will be baked. Um, I'm gonna this to 180 and then bake it again. No, nope. bake. Good job. And so now we got we got our balls bouncing. I'm gonna add another octane material. I'm gonna make this diffuse white. Go to node editor. Um, I'm going to bring in an image texture and Smiley face image. It's as simple as it looks. It's just a smiley face um, as an image texture. And go to opacity and plug that into the opacity and then invert both of these. Just to give our dude a little, our, our little spheres a little smile. Um, with spheres, the oh, this dynamic, these dynamics are already cached. So, what we can do about that? Okay, with spheres, what I was trying to say is, with spheres, the UV maps get kind of weird. So, if you're trying to put an image on a sphere, just make it a two by one, two across by one up, um, and you should be fine. The UV maps will inevitably get kind of wonky. But for the smiley face, it's just two to one. So I'm gonna pull up the dynamic stack, clear the cache, bring up the random. Rotation. 
360, 360, 360. Now we got all of our weird little smiley faces randomly rotated. Um, then you can bring up the dynamic static if you want to make it, and it'll be pretty quick. And we got our little smiley faces. Look at them go. Cool. Um, and then uh, I'll bring in an octane camera just to show you how to do depth of field. I'm gonna bring in an octane camera and a null object. I want that null to stick right there. And then I'll go to my octane camera, uh, focus object, null. I'm under the object tab here. Octane camera tag, go to thin lens, depth of field, turn autofocus off, and turn the aperture up. And up here, you gotta select your octane camera. And then, depending on how much you crank your aperture, you'll have a bit of depth of field. And you can animate the position of this null. If you wanna rack focus to this guy, um, I'll just really exaggerate this so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so, null object, coordinate uh, position x, y, z. Set keyframes there. And I'll have a rack focus all the way to that. Z is really the only position that changed, so I'm just going to set that. Now, we have our beautiful, beautiful rigid body dynamic simulation. That was pretty simple. That was pretty quick, pretty cool. Uh -huh.